Welcome to episode 25 of the Venture Ventures actual play D&D campaign that is Dungeons and Dragons, in case you're not in the know. I think it's just us being lazy as D&D players. It's, just, it's much easier to say D&D than Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I am Jake Friday, your dungeon master for the day. We are a obstinacy, if you guys can think of the animal group that uh, is called an obstinacy, I'll give you inspiration, of improvisers, writers, LARPers, and all-around story lovers play where we play this D&D campaign that I already said. So, um, yeah, let's go around the, uh, the screen here, the virtual table, introduce yourself, name your character, and I will finish up the announcements and we'll get going. Lex. Oh, hi, I'm Lex. I play Ashwin, the mouse folk fighter. Dave. Hey, my name's Dave Roderick, and I play a character called Prodding Rod. He's a Kenku warlock. Wow. Brian. I'm Brian, and I play Crispin, Crispy Oakenshaft. Um, and I'm going to get, he's a human monk, by the way. And I'm going to guess that it's an obstinacy of hippopotami. They seem obstinate. You're close. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was my guess. You're close Wait. in size. Um, oh. oh. Hmm. Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega. I play Orson Akers, and I'm dressed as Mario because it is March 10th. Indeed. Mario. 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 Uh, Mario. Mario Day. Richard. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Richard. I play uh, Nihilus Nymerith. He is a titan sorcerer. Uh, is it manatees? Also close. Uh, it's buffalo. Mm. Huh. I quit. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either, but it was a fun one. I actually made a spreadsheet full of these names. So we're just going to go kinda through like, them. Um, like the manatees of the Great Plains. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I don't think so. <laughs> vastly more dangerous, I think. Although I don't know um, if manatees are dangerous. I don't think they are. Um, not. Buffaloes are not that dangerous. It's not like buffaloes like run after, try to trample you. Aren't I've buffaloes se- extinct? No. What? No. no. Oh no, they're bison. Sorry, bison. They're being bison. Uh, stay tuned after the show where we pick up this conversation on extinct animal species of Earth and maybe of the homebrew the world. The dodo. The dodo. Good call. Um, <laughs> so in honor of it being episode 25, we'll be giving away a D&D ampersand water bottle from the Stream of Many Eyes as well as an official Waterdeep Dragon Heist premium dice set. What? Uh, nice. Uh, Damn, I want that. How do I win that? Well, Dave, <laughs> thanks for asking. Um, details on how to win that will be on our Instagram and Twitter feed uh, tomorrow. And you can guess that if you follow both Twitter and Instagram, uh, you will be that much closer to winning those prizes because that's going to be part of what it takes to win it. So stay tuned to those feeds and uh, the details will be there tomorrow. Um, okay. So last time on Venture Ventures, the group is in the Virenal Dominion, which is a former hermit kingdom uh that um they needed to go to to find um <laughs> you okay richard they needed it's a hermit <laughs> hermit crab uh they needed to find someone they eventually found them that person's name was alu and unfortunately they found them dead on the floor um from there uh, they started finding out more information and history about the goings on in the Dominion uh, and uh, learned that there is an acting company of beholders, five beholders, now four, uh, that are trying to claim the whole Dominion as well as um, Shardmine, which are crystal beings of 
of energy, essentially. Um, and both sides are trying to open a gate, one to the Dread Realm, and then the other one, it is not known what they're trying to open it to. Um, so, uh, after some shenanigans in the town of Glotopole, they met a construct named Iris, who also happens to have something Dave slash Prodi is looking for inside of her. Uh, and it's a magical artifact that's essentially, it powers her. Uh, so that's led to some interesting uh, encounters between Prodi and Iris. And um, now you are on your way through the uh, Dionysian forest to the modeled mirror to something called the Prison of the Plains to try and find a teleportation circle or some way to get to where the shard mine currently are because a few of you want to smash some heads uh, there for various reasons. Um, I think we have... We've gotten into that a little bit, um, but maybe the players will ask more questions of each other. So that's where we left off. You guys are in the forest, and you just fought uh, an encounter of flail snails, beautiful shells on them, and that's where we left off, and you guys have crushed them into pieces because keeping them whole, you guys aren't going to be able to stick them in your bags of holding or haul them around. Um... And so each shell, by the way, is 250 pounds. So uh, you guys can break them up into manageable pieces and take as much as you want, but just make sure you're adding that to your equipment. Um, so is that 250 divided by three for our different bags of holding? Or? It's... Um, you can do it that way. It's 250 per shell, so there's two of them, so 500 pounds. Um, three ways. Pardon me, Brian? Divided three ways. Yeah, can you move your mic down a little bit, Brian? Yep. Perfect. Uh, and uh, if you want to take the whole thing, you don't have to take all of the shells. Uh, you don't have to divide 500 pounds between all of you, but... Uh, well, I've That's got plenty of space in mine, so I can certainly shove quite a bit. I'll, I can take a full shell if, if you, you all want me to. 250 pounds you can? Isn't the bag holding up to 500 pounds? Yeah, but I'm talking... Uh, oh, yeah, good call. Uh, damn. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yay! Also, we're not going to leave shells lying around for some scavengers to just come and take... Not after our hard work. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, there's not a. You haven't seen anyone else in the forest other than these flail snails. The forest is dark and dreary, as I've described before. Very low hanging um, canopy. Uh, this is not like forests some of you have been in in the past, uh, where they're, you know. There's cardinals and blue jays fluttering around with hummingbirds and stuff like that. This is a very different type of forest. Um, so add those to your uh, bags of holding then. Um, and so these are going to be in pretty like small chunks because of the opening of your bag. Um, but... Other than that, you have that. Um, what else you find, though, because uh, destroying the shell, you're obviously getting into the body of the actual snail, um, and you find uh, lots of, like, crystal pieces that you've seen before. Uh, you saw it when you defeated the crystal troll. Um, apparently, this thing mostly dines on or likes to dine on crystals. Uh, but you find, like, partially digested, uh, like, a parchment and book pieces kind of stuck to the outside of it. Um, but also, uh, are you guys, do you guys search through the body, like... Absolutely. Aggressively? Yeah, okay. Um, everyone make, or just one of you make a... Investigation check with advantage. 
someone better. <laughs> yeah, I have like no investigation. All right, I'll just say okay. you all do it, and it's fine. Forget it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's I have better. Decent investigation, but I, I wasn't really part of the fight, so yeah, I, that's fine. Uh, crispy, you find a um, amulet uh, that looks rather plain. It maybe iron but it has some filigree along the outside and um when you touch it it is colder than the environment around it and when you touch it it actually warms up a bit to your touch um and uh on the um oh let me make sure this is still working one sec put it on Let's see if there's anything else that I need to hear first, but yeah, probably. <laughs> um, do, you, do you like keep looking at it, examining it? Um, uh, I keep digging through, and I just throw it to it. You broke up. Say it going. again. I just throw it around my neck um, while I keep digging through. I don't stop there now. Okay. When it uh, when you throw it around your neck, it warms up significantly more, um, and um, oh. You look at it, and it says, just on the back, the scrawl in common, actually, uh, says, when you fight unarmed, your foes will have less a chance to stay unharmed. Well, that's a, that's a exciting. I, I like the sound of that quite a bit. Do you want to attune to it? Yes, I do. Okay, it gives you a, uh, a plus two to all your attacks that are unarmed natural hell yeah that's amazing i'm excited about that <laughs> and so you're gonna have to like add that in your character yeah. sheet um working on it now and then um so it's getting close to nighttime at this point everyone do you want to keep pushing forward or uh do you want to rest for the night kind of hunker down what would you like to do well how much further do we have to go uh asking iris she says a couple hours uh to get to the um purposeless encampment which is where you're she's taking you which because that's near the modeled mirror. Right, Does anyone right. need to rest, or do you guys want to keep pushing on? I can push forward. I'm happy doing that. I can I push forward. Like... I'd rather I'd rather get to an encampment than sleep in this forest. Being honest. Mm -hmm. Prodi, you look pretty beat up. How are you doing? Can you push forward? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wounds are fresh and they're stinging, but do you need uh, a healing gonna, or anything? No, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna if I need to, I'll cast a few healing lights on myself. Okay, because uh, if you want, I can touch you and heal you. Um, yeah, if we decide to go forward, that'd be nice. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. Okie dokie. Uh, I'll, I'll do a level two. No, no. <laughs> I'm gonna do a level one cure wounds <laughs> on him. Okay. Uh, 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 plus my spell casting. E e e e. Oh, okay. Uh, seven. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, oh, I feel ready to take on whatever the night holds. Uh, okay. And you guys keep continuing through the forest. It's pretty getting colder as you near the mountain range to the south, which is, uh, where the modeled mirror is. And, um, you get to the base of the mountains and you see these tiny little huts carved into the, uh, mountain and, um, outside you see little gardens, tiny little picket fences, um, very, very, uh, hobbitish, uh, except colder. Um, and approaching, you see, uh, you see four 
beings who are the are less than the size of halflings so um probably like half a halfling um but they are missing their arms and legs oh. and um instead of arms they have like one of them has a drill for an arm one of them has a pick for an arm uh one of them has a shovel shovel for an arm and their legs are insect like uh and uh, most of them have four of these little um, just insect legs. Uh, that's what you – what do you call insect legs? In- uh, mandibles. Insect legs. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> you said mandibles. No, that's mouth, isn't it? Yeah. yeah Jaws. Um, I think they're just called legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just felt weird. I don't know why. Thought I'd ask. Um, sexy legs. That's what they are. And uh, they're made of metal. And the halflings see you, and they're kind of the half halflings see you, and they look at you, and they're kind of like don't know what to do. They look terrified of this uh, this group of adventurers. Um, what do you say? Nihilus will push. Um... Uh, Crispin forward and out, and he'll say, y- y- "I heard you say something about drills. They're your people. Go." And I and I I, I in turn start pushing Ashwin forward, and I'm like, <laughs> "They're your hat. They're your hat. You, you see eye to eye on them. Uh, go talk to them." Are they smaller than me? What's your height? I am considered medium sized. I'm like two yes, and a half they're feet. smaller. They're okay. smaller. smaller than two and a half feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I just asked because I have a skill that I can speak with small beasts. They're not beasts, <laughs> uh, but they are small. That's Would very ca- offensive. <laughs> <laughs> to someone. You see, what they, you see what they look like? Uh, yeah, they're like, think of a half halfling, which is about your size halved, three feet halved. So they're tiny. Um, and you approach, what do you say, Ashwin, or do you push someone else in front of you? (laughs) Are you, are you people okay? Oh yeah, this is, this is our, our home. Uh, are you, can we help you with something? We don't get many visitors here. Well, since you're offering, could we have a place to stay? Um, may I ask what you're what you're you're doing here? Are you just passing through? Just passing through. Iris, uh, who has been bringing up the back, uh, for a while now because of what's occurred between her and Prodi, um. She takes a wide berth and approaches, and they seem to, uh, wide berth made you laugh. Well, doesn't that mean that she, like, went all the way around us to, like... Yeah, she didn't go straight for him. She... (laughs) That's why I'm laughing. This is like, okay. Um, so, uh, the half-halflings kind of relax when they see her. And she says, um, hello, Ab. And uh, one of the halflings, the one with the drilling arm, uh, steps forward and greets her. And they do a normal, you know, small talk uh, thing. And she informs them that... uh, she was taking this group, your group, uh, to the modeled mirror, which uh, is where the prison of the plane supposedly is. And they they nod and um, they offer you guys tea. What kind of tea? Uh, what kind of tea do you want? Oh, oh God. I would not like food. something very floral. Something nice and aromatic. Hey, um, Jay, can I just get a point of clarification? Is it the prism or prison of 
prison. For the uh, the prison of the plains. Okay. Yeah, and she had told you previously that um, someone had been summoning or conjuring uh, other planar creatures and entities for testing. Uh, So... Uh, that's and what that we might be. We might be able to find a way up to most to Shar, the the floating tower, or the floating yeah. city, the floating yeah, tower okay. where the shard mine. Because uh... like prism would have made sense in that context too. I'm like, sure. oh, is it like a prism that we like sure. go into? Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. Also, uh, streaming, uh, communicating this way, things like that get lost in translation. One of the downsides. So, um, it's fine. Um, where was I? Uh, T T. Uh, so they have basically I uh, Jake Jake is not speaking of myself I don't that felt weird saying third person Jake uh Jake doesn't know a lot about T so um <laughs> sure so you they give they serve you something floral uh and it's not as floral as you would like which is very similar to uh pretty much everything else in the Viranal Dominion. Everything's kind of muted and dark and just not floral. Uh, so... Um, Nihilus takes one sip, doesn't like it, and pours it on the floor. They uh, <laughs> they look at you and they apologize profusely. I'm so sorry you didn't like your tea. And there's four of them, and they introduce themselves as Ab, Bab, Cab, and Dab. Don't like it. Dab. D A B. Yep. Dab. Yep. Um. And Ab seems to be, uh, kind of the one who is the most assertive. Um. And is he the most? Is he the most in shape? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He better be. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. You can't. It's. 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 Um hard to tell because they're part construct so um but yeah you could say there's he's all right so hey guys i think i'm gonna i'm gonna i gotta figure this out like how are these constructs built like how was magic built how i know but i gotta figure out like can i can i roll insight or something to figure out intelligence roll intelligence yeah to figure out like what type of constructs these these beings are uh, do I have to do it on a specific one? I just want to do it on yeah. all of them, like the four of them and Iris. Let's just do a general intelligence. Which, make a case for what type of skill you want to use and, and why you think that should be used. I'm fine with using intelligence. Okay. I'm just wondering, in case you want to add proficiency, you would need to use a skill, so... Uh, I'll do... Can I do investigation? Nope. Damn it. <laughs> because you're not going to be, like, touching them and, you know... Okay, yeah, it'll just be straight-up intelligence, then. Yep. Ooh, uh... 13. So, um... You have no idea how Iris works. Uh, that is some high-level... Uh, invention, inventor area, uh, artificer area that you have not a clue about. Um, but, but do I? Does my character know that Felix Tripnik built her? Or yeah, everyone knows. Yeah, okay. um, it's common knowledge, and I've mentioned this uh, before. It's common knowledge that uh, Avner Bree and Felix Trip Tripnips made a lot of their money on making Warforged for the war uh, between the uh, Northern Enver and Southern Enver. Um, and so you saw a lot of them, especially in Anista. Um, so Iris is basically Alita Battle Angel. Sure. I haven't seen that movie, but what is... I don't think she's near as cool. <laughs> <laughs> what is that... <laughs> you can tell me later tonight. It's not an inside joke. <laughs> um, 
No, I don't think it's an inside joke. I was just about to ask, like, what is she? But um, then I thought, spoilers. She's like a she's a she's battle an she's a battle robot. Oh, okay. Um, and then with the half halflings, uh, it's much more crude, and um, it's it's like grafted. Uh, m- metal into flesh, more like golemancy, uh, which uh, is a known area of magic. Um, what else did you want to know? Wait, I'm just always like- curious. Well, I, I I usually want to know if the, if the robot is evil or not. Like, are they <laughs> uh, make an insight check? <laughs> I mean, you, like, <laughs> I don't know how Base you... 11. Based on, uh, well, insight would be 16. Uh, but, it, yeah, it's like, aren't they bound with some sort of, like, uh, spirit, right? Um, it depends. They can be. Uh, but you you can't, like, it's going to be... You're gonna incite this from their actions and the f- and like your intuition. So, um, both Iris and the half halflings uh, give you the feeling that they they don't give you the feeling that they're bad in any way or even neutral. So their alignment okay. is good. You can you believe it's good. So, okay. Um, can I ask one of the Yes. A question. Yes. Hi, little ones. Um, okay, so I'm wondering how who creates you, or I know what Trick Nips does, but like, are you guys able to create yourselves or give yourselves life? Um, I, it it, uh, it it I I've never heard of Trick Nips, but um, uh, when we were working in the mines to to uh mine crystals um the duragar uh which you know everyone pretty much knows it's just essentially <laughs> and they have a they have a constructed um pomeranian that <laughs> makes starts chewing on a toy um anyways so duragar essentially Underdark dwelling dwarves, and um, they're not known to be good in any way. They're mostly evil, um, and so you're talking to Bab, and she says the Duergar called our creator's skull scar, and um, his followers uh, called themselves the Sidon ones. So Skull Scar gives you guys life? According to the ones that beat us and made us mine these crystals. For... Where can we find Skull Scar? I don't know. I never saw him. It's the Duergar who we overheard talking this way. Oh. Where um, can we find Dorgarg? In in the mountains underground. Uh, and Is you've heard s- make an intelligence check, Prodi and Nihilus. Two. Nine. Uh, it wasn't a high DC, but Nihilus, you're like, sighted ones? I've never heard that word before. And Prodi, you're like, oh, yeah, I heard that in episode one. Uh, sighted ones were the... The cult. It's like a cult, right? Yeah, the cult that... And everyone else calls them... Uh, the cult of the skinless, but they call themselves the Sidon ones. Um, they tried to kill the flump. Correct. Fantastic. Uh, yep. Nailed it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she basically, uh, you guys find out through the night, you guys are fed and, um, given as much tea as your heart desires. And, um, is there any other, questions you want to ask about Duragar go ahead well we're we're actually heading to the the model mirror as a 
Georgia. And as we understand it, you might have some insight into how we could get up to most Ashar, because you were mining mining those crystals for a shard mine, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we um it was the Duergar were in charge of us, but the shard mine they worked with the Duergar until something happened and then the Duergar started hating the shard mine and then around that time that's when we escaped but uh, yeah we we can take you to the beginning of the mottled mirror and get you there but um, we we won't go any further and you'll need this to to get there I'll take you in the morning but beyond that you'll need this to get the rest of the way and she hands you crispy just a little uh, flat, round, smooth stone and um, says just wh- whoever's, make sure you stay in a single file line and I'll tell you this tomorrow morning once I take you there again but make sure you stay in a single file line and follow the the blue cracks in the ground do not stray from the blue cracks in the ground um, but don't worry, I'll tell you in the morning do we step on the cracks? Sure. As close as you can get to the cracks. No broken backs to be worried about here. No, no. Uh, you might get a broken back if you stray from it. Um, what was uh, your... Understood. I'll, I'll hold on to this. And um, what was your other question? This is Jake asking. I f- forgot. That pretty much encompassed everything. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Nah, I think uh, a night's rest would do us good, and we can head out in the morning. Prison of the Plains. Uh, okay. Um, Brian, how does how does Crispy feel when uh, Nihilus um, mentions... Um, Uh, I'm trying to think of hooking up later. <laughs> <laughs> Check your DM. <laughs> uh, I'm blanking on that. Sure. Uh, I uh, well, I reacted by shoving Ashwin in front of me and uh, deflecting any attention off of me as best I could. Okay. Um. <laughs> And uh, if you guys want to talk now, it's fine. Otherwise, we'll skip ahead through the night. Orson, Uh, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, I understand you're an accomplished pig farmer and you love bacon. I do like bacon. What would inspire a man like you to uh, leave your pig farm? Well, you know, what inspired me is right now – even though I have all these wonderful pigs, I need a bigger acre to kind of farm on. So that means that I need to find uh, more treasure or at least more funds so I can expand my farm because I can't keep it all into a few pens. And I know a few pens will make a great farm, but uh, I need a bigger farm in order to feed the pigs. Yeah. So, yeah, so they cannot just Understood. stay in this. Yeah, and right now they've been crowding into the house. They've been pooping into the house. It's a, it's not a very pleasant. So, uh, I, I can imagine that. That yeah. sounds pretty miserable. Yeah, very, very miserable. And uh, um, also, they're just really good at disposing of lots and lots of things. They disposed of half of my possessions and maybe a body. And then, aside from that, you know, we'll just. We'll just make sure that's a bigger house. Uh, did you just say that? maybe a body? A body? M- maybe? <laughs> it, 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 you know, there's nothing to worry about. You know, it's just, you know, like sometimes if someone trespasses in your house and they fall over and it's like, oh, they're... They fall over. Free, free, free chow. <laughs> well, free let's chow. make sure to, uh, to get you some money so that when you invite us over pigs uh don't eat us i right. guess yeah oh, let me, oh, right. as, long, as long as you don't trespass there will be no problems so how much, uh, hmm? 
Are you on the lamb? <laughs> <laughs> no, that- I, I raise pigs. He's on the hog. No, I, I am on the hog. <laughs> I am on the hog. <laughs> <laughs> how so how much money how much money do you need how much gold do you need for this acres it seems like a very achievable quick thing well the big problem is in this town a lot of the the state has been raised because too many people with too much money have come in and uh just raised the price of everything so mm. now in order for me to keep the farm i have to be able to buy more expensive land just because of where I am. There's condos going in right next to you. Well, yes. Some of those some of those little houses are are just so expensive that it makes absolutely no sense. That's why I have to crowd all the pigs into my house. The same things happening in some of my old neighborhoods in Doomerville. It's really yes. sad. Yes, yeah. they yes, all that strange gentrification is just making yeah. everything so expensive. <laughs> Well, we got these shells now, so hopefully you could get some money out of them. I, I would like that. That should make a dent. Gentrification. Well, thanks for letting me know. I was real curious about that. Oh, well, thank you for asking. Gentrification is real in this world and the <laughs> fantasy world, everyone. <laughs> Always. Uh, real bitch. <laughs> fantastic. I love it. I love when you guys ask each other questions. Um... So, uh, you guys have been having dinner outside because you notice the the huts that they're going in and out of are maybe like three feet tall at the at the highest. So they offer a you guys would have to crawl in, but they offer to they're kind of half circular homes cued into the rock uh, of this uh, mountain range of this cliff essentially that signals the beginning of the mountain range. Um, So you guys can sleep in one of their tiny guest rooms, but you won't be able to all be in there. Um, Or you guys can camp outside. And they say like, um, Ab tells you like, Oh, every night I, I uh, put up an alarm outside our perimeter and it's been a couple months since we've had any disturbances in the middle of the night. Well, I, I've gotten rather comfy with our regular sleeping arrangements, so I, I say we all just stay outside and do our usual thing. I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. Okay. So, so we do that. you bed down, and Ab, as he said sets up an alarm uh, around the perimeter and um, are you guys just going to sleep through it or still take watch? I'm going to vote we still take watch. I'll take the first one. Two more? I'll uh, take the last one. I'll take the middle one. Okay, Brian make a perception Eleven. Okay. Um, the noises you hear are haunting as they have been in the past. Um, you hear weird noises. You hear possible uh, animals eating each other, but <laughs> nothing is. Uh, nothing comes and tries to eat you. Um, and then you wake Nihilus. And Nihilus, I need a perception check. Seventeen. Uh, same thing here. Uh, just more of the same. Okay. And- um, he does though uh, draw what he thinks Orson's pig would look like, being very happy and eating people. That is a happy pig. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, when Orson was describing that, I was thinking of Snatch when, uh, have you guys seen Snatch when the, the villain is talking about feeding people to his, his pigs, um, dogs, right? 
No, I thought it was pigs. Pigs, definitely. He was, he has a pig farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he talks it's about a, like starving them. Pigs. <laughs> yep, like so they can eat a body within eight minutes. Yeah. Oh. He goes into detail about how to do it. Uh, so Orson might have watched that movie somehow. Um, Orson might have lived that life. Sure. <laughs> there you go. That's what it is. Uh, anyways, uh, so Nihilus, your your watch goes over fine, and you wake Orson to take the last watch. Orson, make a perception check. All right. That's not high. Um, let's see. <laughs> that would be a six. Holy moly! What is what could what would Orson get distracted by during this uh, to explain? Like, what is the type of thing Orson would do uh, in his downtime if he was bored or something? So I think what would happen is uh, he probably has like a much smaller bladder, and so he just has to get up and pee. Uh, just goes elsewhere to do it and for that three two or three minutes while he's like taking a whiz he's not looking at anything other than just being relieved I sure. think that would be the time something happens um, but luckily f- for you nothing happens and the night passes and you guys are fine and you wake in the morning to the smell of spiced bread baking uh and you guys are served a wonderful breakfast with boiled and scrambled eggs. The bread I already mentioned, as well as some um, some faux meat that uh, they describe to you as uh, made from the root of a tree in the forest. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically like... They put it in, uh, they tried to put it in like a sausage type container, but there's no actual intestine. So um, it's a vegetarian sausage. I, I don't know. It's, it's a little rubbery. It doesn't. Mm. Prati does not take part in the eggs. Okay. I can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> N- Niolis just like lifts the plate up to his uh, mouth and he eats it while staring at Prati. Prati just like <laughs> <laughs> he he just eats whatever else there is like vegetables and the sausage and that's a wonderful tries sight. To avoid, tries to avoid eye contact with Niolis. <laughs> um, not only Orson because looks at, Orson looks at the sausage and, and trying to figure out like how is this. How is this vegetarian? <laughs> like he doesn't, he just doesn't get it. Yeah. Taste it, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. And, and they apologize <laughs> profusely to you. I'm so sorry you didn't like it. It's all we can we can make here, and uh, you know we're just trying to start our lives now that we um, are free. Well, this bread is downright wonderful, so you're bread doing is something right. I like the bread. The bread is good. Prati gives them a little a little bird robot figurine. Oh, cool. It's a keepsake. Um, says, he just says, thank you. That's it. Oh, thank you. This is, You made this? Yeah. I'm a tinkerer. Wow. How long? Like, how do I fix it if it breaks? <laughs> it's um, it's 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 got like a little, like a little instructions written on the back. A little, <laughs> you can take it apart. Carved into the back. Uh, yeah. How much does it cost you to make those toys? I think it says in like the Xanathar's guide. Um. But regardless, just make sure you mark that off if it does have a monetary value. Uh, and, um, so breakfast is done and Ab, uh, brings out a quiver and, and, uh, says, we'll get going here if you guys are ready to head out. Um, but I wanted to give you guys these, we stole these on our, when we escaped from, uh, the mines, um, 
and it's a quiver. Do any of you? He's just kind of offering it in general. He doesn't know, um, unless or, or crispy. Do you keep your longbow out of your yep. bag? Yep. Okay. It's slung across my back. So Ab takes it to you and offers it, and um, I will. Th- thank you. What? It's a nice quiver. Um, does it do anything special? It is. Um, quite nice but uh they uh don't know what it does they've just seen it's one of the it's just like something they grabbed as they were leaving just kind of as an fu to their their captors um uh but they're not it's not normal arrows and um there's runes inscribed on the arrowhead uh, so yeah. Well, I sling the quiver across my back and say, I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth, but I pull an arrow out and I hand it to my more magically inclined friends to take a look at the runes. You guys, uh, you guys know anything about what this says? Do we need to do maybe like an arcana check? Yep. Okay. If you're proficient in it. I am proficient in it. uh, uh, uh. I got a 21. Uh, yeah, you definitely think these are uh, magic arrows and they will increase the uh, damage. If you hit with them, that is, damage will be uh, worse than uh, they otherwise would have been with a normal arrow. But you need like an I- identify spell to know exactly what... Is there a finite number of arrows? Yeah, there's, uh, there's five in this quiver um and and uh yeah got it well that's uh thank you you're welcome it's it's uh, you you probably need it more than us we can't really shoot an arrow so um you can't make tea you can't make sausage you can't shoot an arrow what can you guys do we're just trying to live our lives fine Nihilus, you can you can live a full life without doing any of those things. I don't know. I've never seen anyone do it. <laughs> oh, Nihilus, I love you, but you're a pain, <laughs> pain in the ass. <laughs> I feel like you all have been most generous to us, uh, and I understand you're going to show us the way, so I'm ready if the rest of my group is. Well, before we leave, Nihilus does knock over another cup of tea. <laughs> how does how does everyone else feel about that? I'll just shake my head and, and down the last dregs of mine. <laughs> and they quickly, like, mop it up and apologize profusely. <laughs> All right, let's get to that mottled mirror. Okay. Uh, Ab leads you... Um, kind of down the uh the cliffside uh paralleling it to a crevice and then down into a cavern and um it's not dissimilar from the cavern and cave you went in before you entered the Virenal dominion uh the this this shiny uh sparkles and micro crystals in the rock aren't as bright um but ab leads the way and you go for probably an hour and then it dead ends um and he stops and reminds you of the rock he gave to crispy and um reminds you to stay on the the blue glowing cracks and Mm -hmm. stay single file all right, and I pull out that stone. I say, do we know where we're going? I, I... And he says, um, "You just go through this rock, and it's just a wall face." Uh, goes up to it and puts his drill arm through it, and you can see that it's like passing mm. through the rock effortlessly. So you guys. All right, deep breath. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. Here sure. We go. What's your marching order? I need a marching order. Uh, 
Uh, so I'll walk up in front with that with that round stone I was given. Okay. I'll be towards uh, the back. Who's after Crispy? I'll go. Okay. You want to be on my shoulder again, Ashwin? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be behind you. All right. All right. You need to go somewhere fast. You you just hop on my back and we'll. Is, is Iris take off. traveling with us? Uh, she is, but she's taking up the the back. Uh, okay, I'll I'll follow behind Ashwin because I assume Prady wants to be near Iris. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> we have the, the second to last. Crispy Ashwin Nihilus Orson. Stay on the blue cracks. Orson, watch Prati. Prati, if, if, if something happens to Iris, we'll be in a bad spot. I'm just going to throw that out there. This is not the time. <laughs> 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 and, I, and, I, and I take the lead, and I, and I walk through the wall. It's a very dad, like, parent thing to say. <laughs> very called out. <laughs> Does Prati just nod? Prodies just says, uh, you guys don't have anything to worry about right now. I appreciate that. <laughs> Iris, right now. <laughs> Iris says, yeah, right now. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> um, so you guys enter through the stone wall. And um, as Ab was taking you to the this dead end in the cave, uh... He mentions that uh, caretaker Inseth, I N S E T H, uh, gave him this smooth rock as a way to get to him. So that's how he got the uh, smooth rock. Um, on the other side of the stone, uh, you find yourself in a forest under the mountain in a massive. Uh, tunnel cave um, and the trees are white completely white the ground is still stone uh, but the trees are growing from the rocks and their roots are exposed um, and they are lit by a soft blue light that is coming over a plateau when you guys enter through the rock this path extends out into this massive cavern but it extends uh up so it uh inclines and um it se it seems like the incline goes to a plateau but it's pretty it's a massive cavern so it's a decent uh distance away um and uh yeah so crispy uh Walking forward, uh, the, for cracks. <laughs> yep, the rock starts glowing, and then you look down behind it, and you see cracks in the rock that are normal in any cave cavern situation. Um, excuse me. Uh, are, are lit up blue. Certain ones are. And it extends out in front of you. Uh, and... Yeah, so you follow that, and um, your footsteps are getting quieter as you go on. Everything see, where your footsteps are, were echoing at the beginning, they're starting to echo less and less to the point where they're not echoing at all. And it's almost like things are being muted and muffled more and more as you climb up this incline past these trees uh that are growing out of the rocks and um also as you incline the rocks start to come out of the ground and some are even levitating off the cave floor with the trees uh still attached to them uh yeah anything you'd like to do i definitely have my whip out especially with the muted sounds uh feeling for any any warning that it might give me Sure. Um, and 
just to reiterate the set you're getting more and more silent as you go on so this leads you to believe that sound is going to dis- disappear at some point so i want you guys to if you need to do anything that requires a verbal component do it now a wink this is your dm <laughs> talking anyone okay forget it um <laughs> i'm good <laughs> just trying to help uh so yeah guys, guys if you want i can communicate stuff telepathically if you want just throwing that out there Mm-hmm. 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 Um, good. <laughs> I'm just no. looking up all my spells right now. It's like, what <laughs> requires verbal, <laughs> verbal things? I'm like, uh, okay. And pretty much all mine. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Like almost every, yeah, all my warlock spells require verbals. Like, okay then. So, um, all right. Yeah, and in just thinking about it, it's like Iris mentioned it's a prison, so. There's bound to be things that, magical things that are preventing, you know, people from entering or exiting. Um, So at the top of this rise, um, you see a massive lake. And in fact, it is a plateau that you reach the top of. you see a massive lake stretching out in front of you um, and it's pitch black, the lake. And now you see what was giving off that light blue color. There's a orb suspended from the top of the cavern, hundreds of feet above you, um, almost like a moon, but uh, you're not in, in the open. You, you're sure you're still in a cavern. And now your footsteps are completely silent. Uh, you can't hear anything. It's a deafening silence. Um, and then, how, go ahead. How far away is the orb? Hundreds of feet. It's suspended. Hundreds of feet in the air in the middle of the lake. Like, how far away is it from us? Eight hundred feet. Okay, I'm good. I mean, can we? <laughs> Can we roll insight to see if there's some sort of active spell right now, or we do we just assume it's coming from the orb? You know uh, that something is silencing you magically yeah. in this area, okay. uh, just as a, a but, magic user. Like, I just have a technical question. Could I could I walk backwards yeah. closer to the entrance you and then try. cast cast counter spell? Uh, it wouldn't counter spell works for. Like when you're casting a spell, um, if someone else is casting a spell, yeah. Like so like, it. yeah, counter it and then dispel magic is kind of like another version of that. Effects. Once it's yeah. already, okay. Let's say you well, screw up the the counter spell, you don't succeed on countering a spell, then you would use dispel magic on a spell that's already, uh, you know, happened. Um, Immediate spell versus a persistent effect. Thank you. That's much more uh, concise. So the consensus is we're not going to cast that. It sounds like it wouldn't work because it's, okay. inconsist- you know it's it a wouldn't consistent work. effect. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, Nihilus is gonna tap on Crispin and he's gonna do this. We can do so. So we can do charades, or we can do charades. Um, or what I was thinking, a possibility that I had uh, thought through is, you guys can just make. If you want to communicate an idea, you can make um, performance checks or charisma general uh, charisma checks for the communicator, and the receiver will make insight checks or wisdom checks to receive that message um what what i'm gonna do is actually uh when he's not understanding my take my bow out take a normal arrow not one of the special ones i'm not even gonna look i'm just gonna walk look at him and pull it back as far as i can and shoot it because it's not gonna come anywhere close to as far as it needs to go (laughs) yeah it shoots off into the darkness and uh you see it for a little bit and it disappears and um it went somewhere okay nihilus just gives him a disappointed look like 
<laughs> so, um, <laughs> if there's anything else you would like to do, I'm gonna. Otherwise, I'm gonna finish describing what you see. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Sure. So, in the middle of the lake, uh, kind of at if you're if you look at the lake as a clock, kind of at the um, ten o'clock position. If you guys are on the six o'clock position, um, you see a peninsula jutting out into the lake, very thin and. Uh, at the end, at the tip of the peninsula, you see a tiny shack with a dock. Um, it's hard to make out um, details, but you see two figures on the dock. One of them looks like uh, one of them looks like they're sitting down on the dock and is, has a cloak on. The other one l- looks humanoid. Um, yeah. And um, how close do you guys get to the lake? So we're on a plateau currently. Yeah. So like down on the lake. So like you came over this rise, and the lake is probably like fifty feet. Uh, it's flat. So flattened, then it, because it's a lake, it kind of dips a little bit. Um, but like fifty feet from the point of where you get on top of the plateau, the lake begins. So you've got. But it's like a cliff down to the lake. Uh, no, it gently slopes down, but I just want to see if you guys, um, you know, if you stay 50 feet away from the lake or what do the blue cracks look like? The blue cracks are just leading you along towards that peninsula, um, without moving further, you don't, you know, uh, but you think that it's going towards the peninsula. I'm staying right on those blue cracks. So as close to those blue cracks get to the lake, that's how close I get. Okay. Um, everyone else doing the same? You just yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, continuing on on along the outside of the lake, everyone make a perception check. Oh. I will not re-roll that. That's fine. Twenty-four. Oh. Twelve. Thirteen. Seven. Eight. What's that, Ashwin? Eighteen. So those of you who got above fifteen. Oh, that's right. It looks like uh, the lake, the edge of the lake, instead of like a, a a beach, it looks like the water is ending uh, very abruptly and almost like it's going over an edge. Um, so. The land is coming down, and you guys see the lake, and then there seems to be – they're not connected. Like there's – like it's an infinity pool, you know, an infinity pool is where the water just kind of gently – it's very similar to that, if not pretty much the same. Um, Yeah, so that's what you noticed. Those of you rolled above a 15 on your perception check. Um. Okay. All right. So continuing on, uh, the blue line leads you around the lake to the peninsula and on the peninsula. Continue. Uh, Well, it's very quiet, right? It's utterly... still in full full silence? Utterly silent. Where's the orb now? How far is it? 800 feet above you. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, the people, How long is the peninsula? Yeah, go ahead. The people who are at the end of the peninsula, are they uh, are their backs to us? Um, now that you're kind of at the beginning of the peninsula, the shack is kind of between you and them because um, where you were at, you, you got a profile view of the shack and the dock before when you first – came to the top of the plateau and um now since you're directly in line with the peninsula uh the shack is kind of in the way but the shack is maybe those of you with uh decent intelligence you it's like a small shack it's 15 20 feet square because what i'm what i'm wondering is 
I don't want to like startle these two people because it is so quiet. <laughs> uh, I was thinking if I could like maybe go into the water and swim around and kind of like pop up and like wave them down. Um, you can try. Is that what you'd well, like? He... Well, I mean, as as someone who lives in water, would I be able to tell if it's swimmable or not? Like, if it's something I can actually do? It looks like water to you. Um, okay. But, yeah. I'll just dip my toe in it. Okay, so, first. <laughs> to remind you, uh, you're going to go off the, 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 the path then. Oh, even in the water? Okay. Fine. Well, the, the, the path is not <laughs> yeah, in the water. So, no? No, I'll okay. continue. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm up in front, so I put the hand up. Turn. <laughs> and I start oh, doing like an exaggerated Pink Panther tiptoe dun, while I try dun, to... Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun, I'm going to I'm gonna point at my ear and go <laughs> like they can't hear us anyway <laughs> we don't need to be quiet <laughs> um i still try to stealth, <laughs> stealth up the shack. sure roll a stealth check for those of you who want to stealth wow that was terrible 10 <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to roll with this advantage because I'm going to stealth but not intentionally or not like <laughs> with, not with purpose. Okay. 14. Man, Dave, you're oh. freezing up a lot. I got 17. <laughs> Did you hear my number? 14? Yeah, yeah I hear, it's not okay. your audio, it's just like for some reason your video is freezing a decent amount. Um audio's more important though. Uh, Can I try to do something? Absolutely. No, before Nihilus starts trying to sneak away, can I try tripping him with my tail? He's <laughs> he's um he's behind you, and he's cor the, correct the me. Tail's behind. Pardon me. Nothing. Uh, he Nihilus, you're not. You there's no opportunity. You're not going in front of Ashwin, right? Well, unless she's not going to stealth with us. No, but I figure since he's standing behind me, like, I kind of can look back and be like, ah, there he is. Because uh, it's behind me. Sure. Um, yeah, so you want to try and trip him while in front. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> with her tail. I get it. Uh, do oh, I yeah. an athletics check? Make a, first of all, make a... Um, because I still have eyes. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, make a perception check. A perception check. And Ash, okay. when you make a... Yeah. A stealth... Oh, that's a five. Dexterity I fall flat check. on my face. <laughs> Wait, should I... Should I stealth check? Slide of hand or stealth, we'll say. Slide of tail. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, 18. Yeah, um, you kind of slow down, um, and you're pretty stealthy about it and sneaky, and your tail finds a hold of his ankle, and uh, yeah, you want to fully trip him? Yes. Okay, acrobatics <laughs> check, um, Nihilus. So, okay, so I didn't notice she did it. Now I'm doing it in Africa. Okay. Yeah, you're in the process of falling. I got an 18. Uh, oh, no, 19, because it's a plus one. Okay. Um, we'll say, Ashwin, unless you really are... I'm going to say <laughs> he stumbles, but he doesn't fall. But if you really want to make it like a full-on like fighter... I'm a badass athlete. <laughs> I'm going to do some crazy, you know, matrix type tripping with your tail. Let me know and I'll have you roll something else. But if it's just like an, a. What? No, no, that's good. Okay. okay as a reaction <laughs> to, to what just happened, is her tail wrapped around my ankle? Is that how it was it for happened? an instant for an instant like uh, to to 
trip you uh, just momentarily, and then I assume Ashwin just lets go because she doesn't want to be pulled down. Um, okay, well, since I'm so cool and I was not tripped, I am going to, like, reach forward and just, like, shove her into the water. <laughs> Uh, okay. Make a, uh, dexterity save to not fall off the path. And she has to beat my dexterity? Or how does that work? I'm gonna say it's just gonna be a dexterity save. Oh, she has to beat her own? Yeah, you you push her, but it's like... I just want to see if she can be startled by it and recover it's not quick me, enough. right? No, you stumbled and looked stupid, but you didn't fall off the path. Um, a 19 made me stumble and look stupid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Ashwin. So, so just a regular dex or an acrobatic? So a dex save, which will be um, on the left-hand side of the page towards the top. There's a box that says saves. Yeah, so 19. Uh, you're fine. Um, he tries to push you, and you shrug it off. Uh, um, Jesus Christ. Uh, Crispin, take care of your children. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I can't, can't see any of this happening. He doesn't even I'm, know. Busy, I'm busy focusing on my terrible sneaking up to the shack. <laughs> yeah, and, and I am an excellent sneaker, by the way. So all this, I don't think I look stupid. I think I look real cool. <laughs> no, she grabbed your leg and you started to stumble, but you saved it. So it's just like, you know, when you, you're walking down the sidewalk and a, a root has pushed up a portion of the sidewalk and you trip on the crack. It's just like that. Mm, um, no, I, I live with insecurity. I always stare at the ground when I walk. You still tripped. Uh, um, yeah, so continuing on, uh, you're stealthing forward uh, to this peninsula, which is uh, 200 feet long. Um, and getting to the shack, you see the humanoid that you already saw uh, made out is at the front of the shack just watching you guys. Doesn't look threatened or doesn't look looks perf perfectly relaxed. Um, this person has a uh, shaved head and is wearing similar garb as, uh, for those of you who met him, uh, Inquisitor Velov, um, kind of on the front porch of this really tiny shack uh, as you guys approach. So he looks like a cowboy? Uh, no. Uh, Inquisitor Velo Velov had like... Uh, <laughs> a cloak but it was very more like van helsing more than uh, uh more than the gunslinger okay he had a lot of bottles and like knives and daggers remember um mm -hmm. well seeing that he's not uh alarmed i, I stopped trying to be sneaky about things <laughs> um, so you're like sneaking along i, I, I changed my gate to something very regular yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just totally normal. imagine like the profile shot of this on the peninsula. First, you have Ashwin with her tail trying to trip uh, Nihilus, who starts to stumble <laughs> but saves himself. And then Nihilus tries to shove her and she dodges it. And then Crispy sneaking. And then because oh. he fails yeah. to sneak. Uh, <laughs> yep, fine. <laughs> exactly. Um, perfect. Um, as you get closer, he uh, he uh, waves you forward. Friend, he looks friendly. If you want to um, insight Tip check, you can. Um, it's up to you guys. I tip my hat, and I, yeah, I'll do an insight check on him. Okay. Nine. Yeah seems friendly um he's motioning you forward and to follow him kind of like he oh. turns sideways and says come on um and oh. the, you guys just follow yeah the blue line leads straight to the shack and kind of dissipates after that uh the way he's walking around not on any blue line as far as you can tell um Makes you think that following him will be fine. 
And, uh, yeah, so the shack, as I said, is 15 to 20 feet square. And uh, now you can totally see that the water doesn't meet the edge of the peninsula or any part of the land. It just falls off like an infinity pool um, all the way around it, including around the peninsula. Um, as you rounding the shack, uh, you see the cloaked figure at the end of the dock with a fishing pole uh, back to you. But it's a very long cloak that kind of extends down the dock off of the figure onto the dock in a heap about 10 feet, continuing 10 feet past where that figure is presumably sitting on the edge of the dock. Uh, and um, as you step on the dock, you start to hear your footsteps again. Mm. Huh. Okay. Uh, uh, Nihilus is going to turn to Ashwin and say, you little shit. <laughs> Me? <laughs> you just pushed me. Um, that's it. He's, that's all he needed to say to her. Fair enough. And uh, once the sound, you start hearing your footsteps. Uh, the Inquisitor introduces himself as Inquisitor Sovoth. S O V O T H. Um, Sovoth. Okay. And. Uh, do any of you want to... So the dock extends about 20 feet. Um, I forget the uh, anything. Uh, the cloaked figure, the top of the cloaked figure, the hood doesn't fall quite naturally on the figure's head. It kind of goes up and kind of flattens out, but then you can kind of see it moving rhythmically yeah. under the hood, something moving. Um, and Inquisitor Sovoth says, uh, are you here to meet the caretaker, I assume? Uh, Inseth? What, pardon? Inseth? Is that who he's talking about? Y yeah, yeah. Can, yes, and, uh, caretaker Inseth, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, y yeah, we are. Okay. Uh come this way uh and <laughs> um so uh leading you on the dock the uh inquisitor says caretaker we have guests they carry the stone you gave to the purposeless half halflings <laughs> and uh the caretaker uh you hear his voice and it sounds like that does not sound uh, like the uh, guests he told us we were going to have. And uh, Inquisitor says, "What? Uh, nevertheless, they're they're here." And uh, Caretaker says, <clears throat> "Will you make us tea, please, Inquisitor <laughs> Sovath?" And Gnarly says, no, thank you. And uh, the, the uh, Inquisitor just turns around and leaves you with the caretaker who uh, starts to turn around, but it's not as you'd expect. It turns around and um, imagine my hand is the body sticking, kind of sitting on the dock. And instead of turning around like this, it kind of sweeps out like this. And now you notice that this being is connected to something that is articulated down. It's an arm articulated down into the water. And as he's articulating around, um, at the end of this long metal arm, uh, you see a human boy or what once might have been a human boy now now the caretaker is a boy with a perfectly circular hole taking up most of his torso um and in the center of the hole suspended in midair is a brain uh just kind of sitting there um and uh that causes you to look up under the hood the hood is pretty long but you can still kind of see underneath it 
and uh, where the br that brain might have once been. Um, you see that the top of the boy's skull is missing, and sitting inside the bowl of where a brain should sit is a uh, beating heart. And um, connected to the boy's back is that articulating arm made of flesh and metal and things like that. Um, yeah, and it seems to disappear down into the water. He looks at you guys and says, I'm caretaker in Seth. Hi, my name's Crispin. Uh... <clears throat> Sorry, I've never met a uh, arm like you before. Doesn't seem phased by any any of your reaction or what you say, and says, "What can I help you with?" Well, we're uh, <clears throat> we're looking for the the well way up to Mostashar, and we were sent this way to the prisons of the plains. <clears throat> are, are we in the model mirror right now? This is the model mirror. Yes. The prison. Oh, hey, guys, we're going the right direction. Mm -hmm. All right. The prison is what you see before you. It's the lake itself. That's uh, interesting. So you're the caretaker of the prison, then, I take it? <clears throat> that is my charge. Who, who do y'all keep in this prison? Various beings from the upper and lower planes that were conjured and summoned here and trapped by magic. Magic that I cannot comp comprehend. So not your magic? No. I don't suppose any of the uh, beings in here are fond of teleporting <clears throat> they're tortured and experimented on they're probably not fond of much fair enough <clears throat> anybody want to jump in <laughs> and looking, looking down um you see kind of fleeting visions of monstrous things you've never seen in your freaking life and it's like once you see these these flashes, these kind of ripples uh, that kind of give you a glimpse of of what's under there, um, you, you're terrified. The things you see are only of things you would imagine in your nightmares. There's horned devils and chain devils and uh, disgusting gibbering mouthers, and um, there's there's uh, chained up beings that seem like at one point they might have been beautiful um, maybe with some divine power in them but now that they're just angry and screaming and it looks like some of them are screaming and yelling but no sound is coming out while others are just staring up through the water in these visions, these, these fleeting uh, views you have are just staring up and smiling. Others are not looking at you. It's a, it, you see these various, um, vignettes of just scary shit. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Where's the portal uh, to the plains? You want a portal to the plains? That's why we're asking. What plane do you want to go for, Triton? Oh, um, where do we, we want to go to that mountain, or right? You know there are more than one plane, right? Right? <laughs> we want to go yeah. to wherever the shard mind are. Uh, we're, right. we're trying to get up to most of Shar, so we're trying to stay actually on this plane, but I figure any portal that can send someone to a different plane can probably send us somewhere else on this one, I'm hoping. I can <clears throat> send you to the part of the mountain range that houses the entrance to most of Shar. I cannot send you directly to most of Shar, unfortunately. 
Hey, the entrance we'll is uh, where we're trying to get. <laughs> what can you offer? Oh, oh, I got something. I got something. Then he go and he grabs something <laughs> inside of his bag of holding, okay. and he pulls out a head. It's like this. What? <laughs> In addition to what else? Ooh. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well. Wow. You, you, you can. You can take this. Hold. You I, can you hold on to this? Uh, it's very very bitey. Caretaker doesn't um, reach out for it at all. Just the the arm is just articulated towards you, and its legs are dangling off. Um. Yeah, it doesn't reach for it. Um, I okay. can I'll, I'll offer th- you... I'll, I'll throw it in your direction. He throws it. <laughs> Do you want to throw it at him or, like, just kind of at his feet? Kind of, like, at, like trying to get it to the arm. So he's trying to get to the arm. This is a horrible thing, but he's going to throw it at the thing that is he's trying to get it to catch. Okay, so, like, at its chest. Right. <sighs> okay. Um... What's your dexterity score? Let's see. Um, dexterity is... Sorry, my computer just rebooted. Let's see. It is... Dexterity is a 13. Yeah, you're not too far away. That's fine. You are able to uh, toss the head, and because it's an injured or maybe it's malformed Varguil. Uh, it flutters in midair, so it kind of throws off the trage- trajectory of the head, and the caretaker doesn't make any attempt to grab it, but the fluttering and the movement of the Varguil kind of sends it off, and it falls in the water um, and just kind of flutters for a second and then kind of and you don't see it anymore. You just hear... Oh. Well, okay. what, uh, what does a being such as yourself value? Don't mind. Would, you, would you take an interpretive dance? No. Mm. Would you take wow. a construct? Uh... What? I am a construct. What? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. What if I see one back here? And Iris is is um, just as terrified as you guys are, uh, but she's not stepping forward and addressing this caretaker. Well, but would you take it? <laughs> who who built you, caretaker? My creators. Followers oh. called my creator the Sidon King. I don't remember what he looked like, just that he was sad and that he told me I disappointed him. Uh, and he said that this creature, which is a caretaker, like part of it looks like a boy, right? Yeah, the edge of the articulated arm that's coming out of the water uh is a boy and like you think it attaches to the boy from the back kind of around the hole in the torso Mm -hmm. so yes the the frontward facing portion the part that is talking does seem to maybe was once a boy but is now something else entirely oh i got i got something else and he pulls another thing from the bag of holding and it's candy floss from earlier <laughs> and it's like and he offers that the the articulated arm swoops forward extremely quick and the boy grasps it and looks at it and says what is this this is a bunch of string but it's very sweet it is candy candy it's been millennia since I've had candy and Here just go. shoves the whole thing in his mouth. 
and um, says, "That is very good, but that will that that is much of what I will need. Do you have any more?" Hmm. Wow. And he keeps looking into his bag of holding. It's like, whoa! And he pulls out a toy spider that he also gets. It's like, I don't know if you'll be... I don't think this is delicious. But it's a toy. No. If you like candy, you probably like toys. I've got a... uh... A flask that'll give you some gin. If you have you ever had gin? What is gin? It's uh, it's kind of a good. It's like juice. It's like it's kind of like candy that makes you feel funny. It tastes like mother's kisses. I don't know my mother. I've never had a mother. It shows. It will make you think like you had a mother. You should try it. <laughs> He sweeps forward. This arm is definitely going down into the water, sweeps forward and grabs it and takes a swig and spits it out immediately and goes, what is this? Are you trying to poison me? No, 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 no. See, look, I'll have some. Mm, It's good. Halfway through you doing that, the articulated arm swoops around the dock and addresses you, Ashwin, and says, What are you? I've never seen you before. That's kind of rude. I haven't seen what you are either. I expect you haven't. I think I'm the only one ever made. Cool. Would you accept her as a payment? What are you? <laughs> hey, don't touch me! <laughs> He's creepy looking. Do you want me to throw him in the water? No, that's not very nice. We're, tr- we're trying to learn lessons here about being nice and no one is learning. <laughs> <laughs> I can feed him to the Yugalas. It will be fun to watch. No, you I'd really like to see you try. Off. What, Ashwin? I said you really do need a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at one point. So, do you have anything else of value? What do you want? I don't know. You need to give me something that you value. I'm putting the interpretive oh. dance right back on the table. You don't value that, <laughs> you stupid fool. I do value it. I'm a really good performer. <laughs> Would you like a drawing? About this time, Inquisitor <laughs> Sovoth comes out and hands those of you who wanted TT uh the caretaker like takes his tea. I'll have a cup. Uh, uh, I, I have say. uh I have some spoons that I got a while back. I'll be willing to part with those. <laughs> you you don't value those. Well how about uh, this? And I, you I got like me there. Out, I take out my uh my carpenter's hatchet that I've been carrying around for the past couple of years from back home. And I just go, uh, I don't have anything much of value per se, but I've been carrying this around for pretty much my whole adult life. Why do you value this? To you. This is my father's profession. It's been my profession until I started roving the countryside. And uh, yeah, this hatch has been passed down for me from my father. So here you go if you want it and I just hold it out to him he takes it and it's worn it's it's used sure. still sharp uh, he swoops down and takes it and grabs it rather gently and looks at it and smiles and set, and puts it near its hole <laughs> in its torso and says this will do nicely and um, turns to uh, Inquisitor Sovoth and says show them to the teleportation circle and they will be out of our hair uh, is there anything else I can help you with what are you I'm still very confused I was made by someone 
that called him the Sidon King. The followers called him the Sidon King, and that is my creator. Um, Let me ask you ask you this. Uh, we can only see a little bit of you. Can we see the rest of you? <laughs> sure. And swooping out hundreds of feet into the air, this flesh and metal just tentacle shoots into the air and is just backlit by this moon of light blue looking down at you now dripping something on you um you basically just see flesh and metal grafted on this arm um and it's and it's mottled and disgusting it's a horror show <laughs> uh thanks now and, where's that teleportation circle? <laughs> and it and it swoops down back into the water and says, "Not a problem," and kind of mimics walking, but is still floating above the dock, um, and shows you to uh, kind of the the other side of the shack and um, makes a motion in the air, and you see these this runic circle appear and says have a fun trip and waits for you to step on the circle well shall we everybody mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hold, hold hands all right i'm gonna hold my hands out mm -hmm. like, here we go like like this <laughs> yeah yeah and we all <laughs> we all walk in holding hands <laughs> so as you guys walk through you feel it's very cold in this cave as it was outside the cave as you approach the mountains, but stepping into the circle, you, you feel just a huge temperature change into the cold um, for a second, maybe two, and then the next thing you know, you're standing in a much smaller cavern, still pretty big. Uh, that cavern was massive. Uh, essentially like a hollowed out mountain mountain was the pr previous cavern with the caretaker in it um now you are in a cavern that's similar to the one you were in outside of the virinal dominion uh when you saw that oblex that was pretending to be a loo um and it's covered in crystals and there are three beings standing with their backs to you uh outwards towards a tunnel and they're made of this pink and rose and uh, dark red colored crystal. And there's crystals orbiting their torsos. And as you in, they look over their shoulders and their eyes that are already glowing kind of grow, glow brighter. Um, and these are what you'd assume are shard mine. And that's what we'll leave it for today we're gonna call it an abbreviated episode so dun, dun, dun. Dun. thank you for joining us today episode 25 um stay tuned for episode 26 next week in one whole week uh but before then let's go around the table plug what you want to plug and um yeah, we'll start with Richard. Hi. Um, <laughs> Debbie Downer. <laughs> Hi, my name is Richard. Um, you can catch me all over social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Le Richard C. If you want to hear my voice even more, you can check out the podcast that I do, Awkward Human Survival Guide and Interview with a Nerd. Fantastic. I listened to yours and uh, Ryan's episode. It was good. I, I learned to it too. I learned. I learned a lot. It sounded. Yay. I think it's deep. I think you, Richard, learning as well uh, works well because people who don't know the LARP community can uh, sympathize mm -hmm. or empathize in that. Um, Lex. Oh, um, you can find me on Instagram at it's period underscore period Lex on Twitter at it be Lex, and on Wednesday nights you can find me playing Starfinder at Scabby Rooster on Twitch. Fantastic. Dave. 
Hey, uh, you can find me at DRod3 on Insta or Twitter. Go. Cool. Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Ryan Omega, under Twitter on Ryan OMGA. And in two days is the premiere of my show, Blank Slate, which is a LARP murder mystery black, bar, black box um, game, which is going to be live streamed. And that's going to be at Scabby Rooster, 8 p.m. Pacific. Cool. I plan to tune in and affect the story as much as you allow. I'm gonna, yes. I'm going to click yes. click vote as hard as possible. Break my mouse. Uh, Brian. <laughs> and I'm Brian. You can't find me because that's the way I like it. I just like playing D&D. &D. Hell yeah. Up. We all do. Uh, I'm Jake Friday. You can find me at Jake Friday on Twitter, at jake.friday on instagram follow our show on twitter and instagram at venture ventures and follow especially because we're having the giveaway of the water deep dragon heist uh dice set as well as the ampersand DD &D water bottle um i also have a couple things to plug because i don't think i've plugged it before um i made a little pet project of a parody of npr shows there's an npr show called um uh, everything is alive where they talk to inanimate objects like TVs. Um, but I did it for D and D. Uh, so check that out on our website, VentureVentures.live. Also in our podcast RSS feed, it's there as well. It's called D and D and everything has a story. I've interviewed, we've interviewed, um, uh, ball bearings, uh, immovable rod and, um, I'm forgetting bag some of holding bag of holding uh vox machina's bag bag of holding uh from their first campaign who i took the liberty of naming clark uh they put dead things in it so he was very upset check it out um other than that see you next week episode 26 4 p.m pacific be good to yourselves be excellent to others be excellent to everyone and yourself that's it all right thank you so much bye Bye. Bye.